Every single time I post a makeup look that has a prosthetic in it, the most asked question is how do I make my prosthetics? And while I don't make every single prosthetic shown, I pretty much always make the silicone prosthetics. So I'm going to show you how to make your own silicone prosthetics today from start to finish and like actually start to finish. I'm not going to leave anything out. This is going to be a three-part series. So part one, this video is going to be how to make silicone prosthetics. And then part two is going to be how to paint and apply silicone prosthetics. And then part three is going to be how to properly remove silicone prosthetics because despite what you see on the internet of people just ripping prosthetics off like myself i do that i am guilty of that it sounds really good it is terrible for your skin so i will properly show you how to remove them i do want a disclaimer that these prosthetics are going to be applied on me so you might see like little dog hairs and kind of probably not the most cleanest setup because I filmed this in my makeup room, not my silicone room because I needed the lighting. So just keep that in mind. If you plan on doing this on someone else, make sure you are sanitary and don't have dog hair in your prosthetics. So with that said, if you'd like to learn how to make silicone prosthetics, just keep on watching. So the first thing you want to do is sculpt out the prosthetic in clay. I'm sculpting this on a melanin board, I believe. You can sculpt on pretty much any smooth surface. Tile is great. Glass is great. I just like these boards because you can get them for super cheap at Home Depot. You just have them like cut it up. If you're looking for some good texture tools like the one I used here, Etsy has some really good reasonably priced ones and they can make like a really big difference and save you a lot of time too. I'm also using monster clay and soft. I usually switch between this and medium depending on the project. The way that monster clay is packaged I like a little bit better so that's usually what I go for. Once you're finished with the sculpt, you want to go and make a flashing edge around it. I'm using a clay extruder for this. I want to make sure it's about a q-tip's length away from the sculpt, if that makes sense, because you want to be able to dissolve the edges, but you don't want too much cap plastic there. You want to make sure you don't have too many harsh edges either, because when you're demolding the prosthetic, it can like catch and then sometimes the cap plastic will tear off so I just go and smooth everything out with one of my tools and then a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. When I first started out I would just have it as a super harsh line and every time I would demold it the cap plastic would just keep tearing but after I started smoothing it out it's a lot better. But once you finish your sculpt you want to build a border around it. I'm building mine up with wet clay. I believe this is the most popular method but there are a few different ways you can do this. I used to build mine up with like cardboard and hot glue but it got kind of messy and it would stick to the silicone. Make sure you're also going around the edges and sealing up any little holes or gaps because you don't want the silicone to leak out. Once it's all built up make sure there's no water on anything and spray some Krylon crystal clear over the entire inside of the mold. I usually spray about one to two layers of this and make sure you spray it outside and let it dry in between. This is just to help protect the silicone from any contaminants. I don't know if everyone does this, but I've had issues in the past, so it's just what I do. Once your mold is completely dry, you can start mixing up your silicone. I'm using Platsil Gel 25 and I tinted it green just so the mold had a little bit of color. It makes it a little bit easier to see if you have any like hair specks when you're actually spraying the mold, but you can leave it clear if you want to. Some of them come blue already, it just depends on the brand you're using. The ratio is pretty much always one to one no matter what brand you're using, but I am using a one to one A and B ratio here. When you're pouring it, make sure you go from high up too. I held this about three feet above the mold and that will just help get rid of any air bubbles. I didn't mix up enough in the first batch because I didn't have a big enough cup, so just Make sure you have a big enough cup when you're doing this because it does add up to be quite a bit. Different silicones have different cure times, but I let this cure for about 45 minutes and then I started to peel back the clay and remove the mold. And once it's out, you want to clean it with some Dawn dish soap and warm water. You want to get out any little clay bits or any leftover crystal clear that might be stuck to it. After it's completely dry, I go in with some Vaseline. This is going to be my mold release. There's different types, but this is probably the least toxic, so I try to use it as much as possible. You just rub it in, but to be safe, go over with some heat, like a hair dryer, just to make sure you don't have any little hidden globs anywhere. Make sure you don't have too much Vaseline on it either, because the cap plastic can slide around, and you also don't want that. 
it. Now for the cap plastic, this is Baldi's by Mold Life. It is a acetone based cap plastic. I'm doing about a 1 to 8 ratio of cap plastic to acetone, but I usually just eyeball it honestly. You'll want the consistency to be liquidy but still have a slight color tint and some little swirlies in it. Not the black swirlies, I don't know what that is. Probably should have cleaned that out but usually a 1 to 8 ratio is a good starting point and then you can either add more cap plastic if you need it or add more acetone you want to pour that into your airbrush and make sure you do a few test sprays off to the side before spraying the actual mold sometimes it can spit out little specks or something so just always do a couple test sprays spray the flashing first and then i go back and forth over the prosthetic usually doing about five to eight layers depending on what the cap plastic ratio was let each layer dry before you spray another and try to soak your airbrush in between. Just put it in some acetone and this will help clean it out and help prevent it from getting clogged. One of the biggest issues when I was starting out is my airbrush would always get clogged because I would never properly clean it. So just soak it in some acetone for a few seconds and then do a couple test sprays off to the side. Sometimes the airbrush will hold on to the acetone and you don't want to spray that directly on the mold. So just make sure it's all cleaned out before actually spraying the mold. Pretty much every airbrush is going to get a little bit clogged up, but if it seems like it's getting clogged up too often or you're blowing like little cobwebs onto the mold, you probably have a little bit too much cap plastic so just try to dilute that with some acetone and that should help once everything's dry you want to check the thickness so I go in with a sharp pin and pick up some of the cap plastic that's on the flashing you want these little bubbles that don't have any holes in them and if it has any holes in them like this you want to add more layers because it's just not thick enough but you want these perfect little bubbles now moving on to pouring the silicone, I'm using the same silicone as before, Platsil Gel 25, but now I'm adding in some Detner. Detner is going to soften it and make it more skin-like. I added in some pigment and flocking as well. The pigment is from Neil's Materials. I'm doing 35 grams of A and then 70 grams of Detner and then 35 grams of B. Whatever the total amount of A plus B is, is the amount of Detner you want to add in for like a super squishy skin-like consistency. It's best to do A, then Detner, and then B because if you do A, then B, then Detner, it can start curing before you're ready. I also did a double cup mix, so I poured everything into one cup, mixed it up, and then poured it into another cup and mixed it again. This will just help make sure everything's mixed and there's no little leftover bits on the sides. Now the silicone is ready to be poured and you want to do this pretty fast depending on the type of silicone you have. I believe this starts to thicken up within like five minutes so you want to pour everything and then you get a cake scraper. I use a metal one. Push around all the silicone and scrape off any excess. You want to do this firmly but gently. Firmly enough to get off silicone but gently enough to not disrupt the cap plastic. Once you scraped off most of it, you want to take a q-tip and wipe off any excess silicone that's where the cap plastic should be. Try to have some sort of light off to the side pointed at the mold when you're doing this. This will make it a lot easier to see what's cap plastic versus what's silicone. You want to make sure there's absolutely no silicone where the cap plastic is or else the edges won't dissolve when you're applying it. This is probably the most tedious part so take your time but work fast with this and just make sure there's no silicone. And I forgot to record this part, but once the silicone is cured, you want to go in with one to two more layers of cap plastic. And then once the cap plastic dries, you want to go in with some baby powder or talc powder and then put that over the entire prosthetic. This will make sure it doesn't stick to itself. And then you want to pull up a little part of the flashing and start working your way through that. Make sure you take your time with this. This is where I typically go wrong in the past. I would pull it up too fast and the cap plastic would separate. So just go slow with it and try to have really good ventilation for this too because you don't want to breathe in all that baby powder or talc. I recommend using a respirator even while doing this if possible. And then you can go ahead and trim all the edges around the prosthetic. You can use scissors for this, but mine never really works. So I've resorted to a rotary razor or like a fabric cutter and it works so much better than scissors. And then I'm taking a foam board and some pins and I'm laying the prosthetic down. The way I do this is I slightly stab the flashing and then I pull it out and then I press the pin into the board. You don't want to just stab it straight down or else the pins are going to be like sticking out the bottom. 
I poke the prosthetic, I pull it, and then I press the pin into the board. And I do that on all four corners, and then I make like a star shape almost. At the point where you can pre-paint them, if you want to pre-paint them, make sure you're very careful with the rubbing alcohol or any alcohol-activated paints. Despite the cat plastic being acetone-based, it can still dissolve these edges a little bit and make them all gummy. And if you'd like to package up the prosthetics, I put mine in these clear little cellophane bags. They have a bunch of different sizes, so you don't have to get the big ones. I typically go for the big ones because it's easier just to put a bunch of prosthetics on one sheet. And if you'd like to watch part two of how to paint and apply silicone prosthetics, that should be up this week, or maybe it's already up by the time some of you are watching this. I don't know. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment them below, and I will try to answer as many as I can to the best of my abilities. I've only been doing this for like a year and a half, so I'm not like crazy knowledgeable, but know a little bit. I suppose that is the end of the video, so hopefully this helps some of you guys, and if not, I believe that is everything, so thank you guys for watching, and I love you, and I'll probably see you next week, and I love you again, and bye.